Good evening. Welcome in the name of the Lord. May the God of grace fill us with the Holy Spirit that we may give glory to the light that no darkness can overcome. Life and death, you can't get any more basic than that. And tonight's lessons take us to that fundamental, inescapable juncture. In the first lesson from Ezekiel, the Lord reanimates dry bones with the holy breath that first gave life to Adam and Eve. And in this evening's gospel, Jesus speaks in that same breath to call out his friend Lazarus from the clutches of death into light and life. In your prayers today and in the coming week, please remember Ted Campbell and his family on the death of his wife, Joanne. Remember Robert Bradford on the loss of his wife, Diane. And remember to the family of Betty Fromers who passed away this week and whose services will be at St. John's on Tuesday, March 28th at 11 a.m. We are graced tomorrow to be baptizing twins, Melody Grace Robbins and Lyric Major Robbins. We rejoice with the Robbins family, sponsors, parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents. Joe Blyer will give you an update on the work of becoming Blessed Trinity Lutheran Church. Thank you, Pastor Mike. As he mentioned, my name is Joe Blyer. I'm one of the three co-chairs of the UNI team, along with Nancy Costas and Kevin Romali. We've met on Thursday, March 23rd, and I'd just like to give you a recap of some of the items that we touched upon. Uh, we discussed a couple updates. One is from the new property location committee. They are continuing to meet to the realtor to view various properties. Part of their task is evaluating each property to see if it will meet our needs. And that includes a lot of assessments that are need to be done. Parking, structural, the exterior, the interior, heating and cooling, plumbing and electric, space requirements and accessibility. There's many tasks that go into an evaluation of any location for consideration. And just as a reminder that the goal is not to spend um, more money than what we receive from the sale of our properties for or an example we are not acquiring any mortgage or requesting any additional funding an update from the asset disposition and non-fixed asset inventory committee they are still working out on clearing this some spaces out of the light of christ uh, facility to store the items from saint john's windish and saint peter's as we are taking them along with us to become blessed trinity the, they are also coordinating on moving the office equipment to Light of Christ as of May 3rd on the closing. This will be the only building that we will be able to operate until we find the new location for Blessed Trinity. If there are any members who want something or know something that they want, need or would like to have for their own, please contact Kendra Riley or Nancy Costas for further information and they will get back to you with the review and their reply. As an update from the attorney, Blessed Trinity Lutheran Church has acquired a federal EIN number with its name. We have also just recently received our ELCA number and our Northeastern PA Synod number also. We are currently working with the steps with the Synod to require a Pennsylvania sales tax exemption under the umbrella uh, Northeastern Synod. We are still awaiting response from our, our state filing of our registry. However, there is a backlog from the state of about a month and a half. So our response from the state is expected somewhere in the beginning of April to um, further our continuation. An update from the Social Activities Committee that they will helping be coordinating volunteers for fellowship time after the Sunday services. So if you would like to assist some time or donations, please contact the social activities, any member of them, and they will be gladly look, uh, be willing to help you help them. 
An update from the mission statement committee. They are meeting on March 30th to finalize the mission statement for Blessed Trinity. And once that is uh, final, we will then present it to the congregation upon its review and acceptance. Uh, we are also now be starting a new subcommittee for the Blessed Trinity Logo Design Committee. Anyone who's interested who would like to have any type of logo presented or would just like to join and help deciding which ones get presented, please contact Kevin Romali um, to join his subcommittee in either designing or helping pick one out for Blessed Trinity. Our next steps are continuation with the progress for the new location search committee on that and as far as our meeting updates we have no new meeting going forward um, as most of our work has been done that we started way back in may and it's less than a year we've uh, were able to acquire so much and get so you know so much done in that time is just wonderful for everyone's patience and understanding as we still continue more moving forward thank you for your time Tonight's prelude is our opportunity to tune our ears to the word that calls us into life. Please join with me in the order of confession and forgiveness. Rise as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. Amen. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. Holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings. Too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt, though you call us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow in your way of life. Amen. Hear the good news. God so loved the world that God gave the only Son so that all may receive life. God embraces you with divine mercy, forgives you in Christ's name, 
and revives you in the Spirit's power. Amen. The hymn is number 793, Be Thou My Vision. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, 
prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you. And you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. And then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal and say to the breast, breath, thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place on you your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We'll now read responsively from Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, in order that you may be feared. I wait for you, O Lord. My soul waits in your word, is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who keep watch for the morning, more than those who keep watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love. With the Lord there is plenteous redemption. For the Lord shall redeem Israel from all their sin. The second reading is from the book of Romans. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. You may be seated for the reading. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The, disi the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you and you were going there again. 
Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to consult them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while, uh, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Martha get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came in where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in the spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends in Christ, may the Lord keep all your days and deeds in amazing grace and abounding goodness for the sake of Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. The Gospel of John is really two books in one. After an opening prologue, the first book follows Jesus as he performs a series of seven signs culminating in today's gospel, the raising of Lazarus. 
Rather than miracles, John calls each of these mighty acts a sign. Signs point. And according to John, each of these signs is intended to point to the ultimate truth that Jesus is the Son of God. From the book of signs, John's gospel transitions to the book of glory, which follows Jesus as he makes his way to his exaltation, which in John's gospel means Jesus being lifted to his cross and likewise being lifted from the grave. Many of the same things that was said of last week's story of the man born blind can also be said of the raising of Lazarus. As in last Sunday's gospel, the raising of Lazarus operates on many levels. It can be seen as simply a great miracle, which it is, but this gospel's goal is not simply for us to admire Jesus for all his awesome power. The goal is rather that we come to believe in Jesus as the sole source of our salvation. In last week's story of the man born blind, Jesus said that he was born blind so that the glory of God might be revealed. In today's gospel, Jesus intentionally returns to Judea only after Lazarus was dead and buried, although he'd been t told two days earlier that Lazarus was gravely ill. In neither case is Jesus being callous. God did not predestined the man to blindness any more than Jesus put Mary, Martha, and Lazarus through a terrible ordeal just to make a grand scene. Jesus has a mission, and that mission is to bring the world, the whole world, into full communion with his Father and our Father. Irony played a major role in the healing of the man born blind as that story proceeded a blind man became sighted and a sight and sighted men became blind. In today's gospel, a dead man steps out of his grave as a living man signs his own death certificate. Throughout the book of signs, Jesus' mighty works have had a double effect. On the one hand, they have produced all wonder and belief, but on the other, those same signs have also inspired fear and loathing in men who see Jesus challenging their power and undercutting their privilege. As, Jesus, as Lazarus walks from his grave, Jesus' enemies are finalizing their plans to send him to his grave. At several points in this story, we're told that Jesus became greatly disturbed. At one point, openly weeping. It's understandable given the trauma that Mary, Martha, and Lazarus had been through. Jesus says twice, he loved these people. It had to break his heart for the grief that they were suffering. But knowing what would happen once he raised these Lazarus, Jesus may well have been grieving his own impending death. In the Gospel of John, this is Jesus' Gethsemane, the garden where in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus prays, let this cup pass from me, yet not my will, but thy will be done. In the course of this long and complicated story, there are many characters with whom we can identify. Grief is universal, and not a few of us have been in the shoes of Mary and Martha, grieving the loss of a beloved brother or sister. Perhaps you can see yourself in the crowd that gathers at the tomb of Lazarus, at once fearful and expectant. Maybe you can even empathize with the Pharisees plotting against Jesus. Their whole world is about to come tumbling down. What about Lazarus? What must he have been thinking as he stumbled out of his tomb, still wrapped in his burial shroud? I wonder 
I wonder if he even knew whether he was alive or dead or something in between. People resuscitated after being pronounced clinically dead often testified to seeing a figure in light calling them to the other side. But when they're jolted back to life, sometimes, sometimes they report a, re a reluctance to return to this world. As Jesus stood before him, calling them into the light, I can understand if maybe Lazarus was himself hesitant to re-enter, to re-enter this world such as it is. There's a line from an old John Prine song that goes, to believe in this living is just a hard way to go. Amen, brother. But if Lazarus had his moment of doubt about coming out of his tomb, maybe Jesus was tempted to join his friend in that tomb rather than walk the path that was laid before him. Talk about a hard way to go. It would be a few days from the raising of Lazarus before Jesus would go to Jerusalem and be handed over to his death. But that day in Bethany, his cross was already laid squarely across his shoulders. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The hymn is ELW 333. Jesus is a rock in a weary land. Rise as you are able. Let us confess the faith of the church in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. You have breathed into us the breath of life. Enliven your church. Deepen our partnerships with your companion churches around the globe, and bless the work of missionaries who accompany them. Merciful God, Hear receive our prayer. Our prayer. Your, sp your spirit brings life to creation. Enliven the natural world and restore ecosystems in need of healing, especially the Lehigh and Delaware rivers. Uplift prophetic voices that turn us to the needs of the soil beneath our feet and the air all around. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You redeem the world and its peoples, free us from systems of oppression, unbind nations and societies from the sins of racism, sexism, and homophobia. Raise up leaders at all levels of government who work to promote the dignity of every human life. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You weep when we weep. Be present, be present with those who grieve or who are troubled by illness, especially those undergoing rehabilitation therapies. You hear us when we call to you. Deliver us from the depths of our despair and free us from the worries that bind us. Merciful God, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Your spirit of life dwells in our assembly. Bless the music ministries of this congregation, especially our organists, choirs, and soloists, and all who lead us in hymns of praise and thanksgiving and in songs of lament and prayer. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You are the resurrection and the life. Even though we die, we will live. With thanksgiving, we remember all your saints who now live in your eternal love. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew our whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. you. May share that peace as you feel comfortable. Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us in these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. 
that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. and our merciful guide, together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert, pouring out his life for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness.
Christ given for you. Go in peace. body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Your newsletters and three times a week email blasts contain complete schedule for all Holy Week services with times and locations for those services. The Maundy Thursday service will be at St. John's and includes a meal that served as part of the table of the Lord. Uh, that will require people to volunteer food uh, for that service. And uh, uh, I know tomorrow morning, I don't know if it's here tonight, but tomorrow morning there's a sign-up sheet. During this Lenten season, we have been receiving food donations to help build up a food pantry for the families of, uh, uh, of uh, the children that are Ten Lincoln Elementary. Your gifts have been generous and are greatly appreciated. Thanks so much. Please note in your newsletters and emails requests for volunteers to make baptismal blankets and to assist in the first responders uh, event coming up on April 2-2. We have an excellent crew of volunteers who enable our Saturday evening live stream services. If you'd like to help in this important ministry, I encourage you to talk to either Paul Tobe, Sandy Butch, or Rich Hawk, and they can explain better than what I can, uh, what's all involved. They can also provide you with training. We have a new web address for Blessed Trinity website. It's blessedtrinitybethlehem.org. The old web address for, the, for uh, the UPG will continue to work for the next year or so, but this is an exciting start for us. Receive the blessing of the Lord. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you in this Lenten journey.
Amen. Our sending song is EOW 758, You Are the Way.